Hey there everyone, it's Graham back again with another Dust 1947 Battle Report. Today we are telling the story, probably the first chapter of three, of the Japanese Navy landing in Baja, California in uh, Mexico and uh, being met with some allied resistance while they get a foothold there. So uh, we're going to have Johnny One-Eye defending the beach uh, against uh, the shadow of death Wang Si Wong. Let's get into it. Baja California campaign is ready to begin. Our first scenario is going to be a modified version of scenario 105, Beach Assault. And in this one we've got a defender with a, a strong point uh, being, uh, their beach is being breached by the attacker. So in this case we've got Johnny One-Eye as the leader of the allies and he is defending against the forces of the Shadow of Death, Wang Si Wong. Quick overview of the forces. Uh, the Allies have already deployed here, so we've got Johnny uh, Johnny Depp, uh, Johnny One Eye, going to be joined to a Ranger Recon Squad with lots of machine guns. We've got a hot dog here with a nice little flamethrower. In the strong point, starting out is going to be my Ranger Weapon Squad. Uh, we've also got a big old six shooter here, some heavy armor. Uh, and the opposite is the Blackhawk, which is uh, definitely a light little ostrich walker there. Uh, and to round it out, I have a Ranger Assault Squad because you need some shotguns in your life, you know? They are going up against the Shadow of Death, who is joined to one of her infiltration squads. Uh, we're going to throw in another infiltration squad. So these are the ninjas that have katanas and some machine guns with uh, improved camouflage. Also a ninja is the uh, railgun team. This is the Ninja Railgun team, so they get the other ninja stuff like uh, smoke grenades and their improved camouflage. Uh, uh, we got best pal Hitomi, who's coming in with a uh, cadet squad. And um, this cadet squad is part of the cadet, cadet support platoon. So as part of that, we are bringing a Basan, which has a phosphorus float thrower, like a flamethrower, and the Anenra, which is an anti-aircraft and anti-infantry walker. Uh, to round it all out and to finish off my Shadow of Death platoon, I've got a Tengu, because you gotta come with a railgun, right? The objective of the scenario is a single tile that's behind the strong point here, and the name of the game is for the IJN forces to make their way up the beach and control this objective uh, any turn after turn three. We're going to put a, a six turn time limit on this because instead of playing with the full uh, 75 and 100 points, we're only playing with 60 and 80. And uh, the interesting thing here is that the Shadow of Death platoon says that if any ninjas in the platoon control an objective, that objective cannot be contested. So according to the beach assault rules, um, the attacker uh, wins if they control the objective uh, but there's no enemy units within range 2 to contest it. Uh, however, Shadow of Death says, Nope, we good, because we ninjas. So, definitely going to be an interesting one. Let's get into the game and start off this Baja California campaign. Johnny One-Eye is hoping to win initiative so that he can opt to go second, uh, because... If uh, if he, he goes first, then he just has to pass. There's no other units to attack or, or anything on the table, which is a bit of a drag. So, all right, let's roll initiative. Okay, uh, Wang Si Wong's first activation is going to be activating herself and her associated ninja infiltration squad. So uh, let's grab one of those models here. 
And given that we got a hot dog over here and we got a six shooter and some shotguns over here, we're gonna play it safe and go right in the middle. And they're gonna move on the board. One, two, march, three, four, five with the free or the one space diagonal. Uh, let's put the rest of the unit there. And they have scout. Uh, so their uh, free scout action, I should say the third scout action is going to be to use their improved camouflage ability, which is going to require any enemies that want to target uh, the Shadow of Death and this squad have to be within range one. So they have to be adjacent. And I don't think any of these units are going to be able to get there and attack this turn. The hot dog can march up, but that's about it. So we're going to call that good. And we're going to say that she has activated. Okay, Johnny has activated all three of his vehicles already, so clearly he's a little bit uh, nervous about the railgun power that can just tear apart vehicles. So uh, in that vein, uh, we're going to, Shadow of Death is going to activate her ninja railgun team. And uh, seeing as we need a little bit more vehicle help on this side of the table, we're gonna put the, the uh, railgun team over here in A1. Uh, it's got a move speed of uh, two five. So let's go one, two. But then instead of marching, um, these guys don't have scout or anything like that. So I guess we are just going to open up on the only unit that we can see, which is the Ranger Weapon Squad inside of the strong point. They are infantry two. And we can see that the railgun do not care. It's gonna uh, roll blast one. So let's get together five dice for that. Uh, the railguns ignore infantry and cover saves. So even though uh, units inside the strong point do get to reroll their failed saves, it uh, don't matter if you don't get any saves. So here goes the railgun team. Oh no, the rangers, classic ranger end. Uh, rail weapon ignores infantry and cover saves. Wow, what do you know? Rail guns are pretty good. So, with that in mind, four of the weapon squads going down. Uh, I think we're going to leave the bazooka because the other weapons uh, are mostly good against infantry and the infantry is all stealthed all the time. So, we're going to leave the, the bazooka in there and right off the bat, the rangers get a bit of a devastating loss out of their uh, central unit holding down the strong point. So out of Johnny's remaining forces, he's got just a lowly bazooka here, which is not doing a whole lot. His unit of recon uh, boys that have scout, so they might be able to march forward and take some shots at uh, maybe an infantry unit that comes out. They might also need to take control of the strong point here. So that's not a great activation. Uh, and then we've got the... Assault Squad, which has some demo charges uh, that they could possibly use uh, depending on how far up the vehicles come. Uh, on top of that, they also have shotguns that would be good for the cadets. So with uh, all that in mind, Johnny's just going to activate the bazooka and, uh, and uh, pass because the bazooka cannot... The bazooka has a range of uh, six, which is enough to go... One, two, three, four, five, six, and not quite enough to get to the railgun squad. The ninjas are stealthed. So unfortunately, uh, all we can do is just activate that unit.
So I'm just now realizing that Johnny actually only has six activations to uh, Wang Si Wong's seven. So Johnny would have gotten a pass token during this turn, which I'm sure he really wishes that he could have. So, uh, well, better late than never. Let's go ahead and use that pass token right now. Well, now that the Anenra has wiped out the squad that was inside of the uh, the uh, strong point there, uh, I think it's time to get some retaliation. This is going to be a bloody one. So uh, I've got the assault squad with their shotguns, etc. And they have a move speed of three. So they can move one, two, three to this point here and go blammo into these ninjas. And that's exactly what they're going to do. So they're going to step up to the plate here. They're un gonna unload everything that they have that's anti-infantry into the ninja squad here and try to take them out here and now. According to their card, they are gonna roll, let's see, there's four of them that are rolling seven dice each, so that's a cool 28. Uh, and one of them gets a flamethrower, which is gonna roll another five. And the flamethrower automatically suppresses this unit. So here's the flamethrower. The target gets no saves from this weapon according to the flame special rule. Uh, so we get one hit with the flamethrower, which is going to be uh, one wound for the ninjas. Let's just keep the ball rolling here. Uh, here is our uh, first uh, shotgun, and that's uh, two hits there. Uh, here is the second shotgun. It's another hit. And apologies for rolling them one at a time. There's a, a big meaty four hits, and here's the last shotgun. Uh, and that's one more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight saves to be made by the ninjas, and then the flame uh, attack is a whole bunch of uh, death. They don't even get any saves for that. Uh, so here's... The ninja saves. Let's see what they got. They are in cover, so the shields do count. So I see one, two, three wounds going through. Um, and that is four downed ninjas right off the bat. Despite their improved camouflage, it was not enough to keep them alive. And the allies have retaliated. Okay, well, we need some more characters on the board here. So Hitomi and her kill squad of Naval Academy cadets are going to march on up the board here and they have five march speed and charge. So they're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and they are going to retaliate the retaliators. Okay, so a couple things of note. Um, the kill squad has something called dazzling speed, which means that when they take damage in close combat, they get to uh, roll a die to try to negate that damage. So that's going to come into play in just a second. Uh, Hitomi rolls uh, two dice against infantry true, infantry two, and then the kill squads each roll two dice. So there's uh, six models there, so they're going to be rolling 12 dice to uh, make something happen here. Uh, the rangers do get to roll five dice at the same time to retaliate. Here's the close combat attacks. Uh, the ninja score one, two, three, four hits. Uh, and the rangers get a whole lot of nothing. Oh man, another terrible uh, roll here it looks like for the rangers. So that's gonna be four of them down. Um, and I guess we'll leave the, the flamethrower, that seems fine. And um, uh, the ninjas get away unscathed. They didn't even have to put any damage on Hitomi here. So a uh, rough start for the rangers, I'd say. Okay, well, Johnny's going to have to take matters into his own hands. He's going to march with his unit of recon rangers. 
and they get a scout, which means that after they march move on the first round of the game, they also get to make some attacks. And so they're going to throw everything they've got into the uh, kill team cadets over here. All right, well, uh, we are at full strength, and uh, Johnny's got a couple of cool abilities. We're going to do Johnny's attack separate because he does get killing spree and you know what once per game he gets to do fighting spirit if he can wipe that unit of cadets off the table through hitomi's extra health i think that's going to be a winning formula here so we got 15 dice for the ranger machine gun and their four ranger auto rifles uh, and they're hitting on crosshairs thanks to johnny's once per game fighting spirit let's see what we get uh we get a lot of hits i'm just going to pull out the shields here um and then after all of those hits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, then Johnny's going to go with uh, his shots and um, uh, all of his hits are going to explode thanks to his killing spree. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and I get to roll another four dice one two three four hits and then these are going to hit on uh factions oh four more stars keep her moving let's go johnny one eye is upset about how things have gone so far so we're gonna throw in another hit there and he gets to roll one more die oh my gosh rolling hot today thanks to fighting spirit this is going to be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 hits on the kill squad uh they save on faction symbols hitomi has got an extra four points of health let's see how this goes they are blocking thanks to cover and so we see with the crosshairs 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 hits go through Hitomi's going to soak up a whopping four of those wounds going down to one health, and then the other four wounds are going to go through to her squad. So one, two, three, four cadets are down, but miraculously Hitomi and one other cadet are still up. Man, these ninjas, these Japanese Navy ladies are tough. Well, the last uh, Japanese activation is the Basan Assault walker and uh, there's a couple of targets now so let's get her moving here we move one two and uh, let's see we are range one two three four away from this last um uh ranger here and we are one two three four five six seven eight away from this ranger squad so with that in mind the Bassan can only make some shots against uh, this last lone wolf. And you know what? Why not? That's what I say. Uh, so we're going to throw all the machine guns into this one uh, lone homie. And that's a 17 dice. Uh, it looks uh, maybe not so great. 17 dice going into the last lone ranger of that squad. Um, let's reroll that guy. Uh, all right, I got one, two, three, four, five hits. So that ranger's gonna make five saves. Let's see what he's got cooking. Uh, almost makes four out of the five saves thanks to cover, but one is enough in this ranger. But the flamethrower is toast. That round one was pretty bloody. Honestly, a lot worse than I expected originally the uh, Japanese are coming in hot and the allies are forced to kind of hold back for those first several activations even with the past token mistake I still think uh, those walkers needed to hang back because the Tengu is uh, nothing to mess with let me let me put it that way uh, so unfortunately that meant that two of the three ranger squads went down uh, the Japanese had some really strong anti-infantry models that went later in the round and that just totally toasted them up so we're going into round two the rangers have an uphill battle but they also have a fair few targets and if they can take out uh, most of the ninjas this round there's not going to be a whole lot of infantry left to take over that last objective uh, we'll see if this game goes to round six
but one turn at a time, let's roll initiative for round two. It's the start of round two, and Johnny's got a couple things going for him. He wins initiative. He's down to almost entirely vehicles, and there is one very prominent Tengu over here that is uh, definitely going to be a threat uh, to Johnny. Uh, along with that is, of course, the Railgun team is very good against vehicles, uh, so that's going to be the priority here. Johnny's going to activate his six-shooter and tell them to move up into this forest, so the six-shooter is going to move one, two... Then the six shooter has a whole lot of different armaments here. And the most notable one is the dual triple recoilless guns. And against the Tengu, which is a vehicle four, we're doing five damage a pop, rolling two dice. And we're gonna choose the salvo this, which means that we're gonna double the dice that we roll, uh, but we uh, are going to be unloaded after using this attack, which means that we're gonna have to spend an action reloading if we wanna use those dual triples anymore. Now on top of that, we also have a couple of eight range and six range machine guns. They can all fire, fire in that forward arc. And out of targets, we definitely have the uh, kill squad here that's not looking too great, and that's only range one, two, three, four away. But let's talk about this railgun team here, see if we can knock them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces away. So the, the um, uh, this, Railgun team is also going to be in a bad spot. Uh, the question is how exactly to divvy up these uh, weapons here. And I think the uh, railgun situation is the biggest threat. So we're going to throw just the range six machine gun into the cadets. And then we're going to pump the other two uh, eight range machine guns. Excuse me, my uh, eyesight is poor. That's another six. So kind of makes up our minds. Uh, the heavy machine gun is going to go into the railgun team. The two regular machine guns are going to go into the kill squad. And we're salvoing those dual, triple, heavy, recoilless guns. They're not heavy. But they're, but they're getting salvoed, baby. Let's do it. Rolling four dice against the Tengu. Each one of these does five damage. Tengu has no cover. Oh, what? Look at that. I was hoping just to uh, get something interesting going here, maybe a critical hit of some kind, but it doesn't matter because that's 15 damage to the Tengu, and the glass cannon is the real deal as the Tengu goes down. But that is not all, folks. So let's roll our two six-range machine guns into this kill squad here. They are in cover, uh, but uh, it's probably not going to be enough to save them against all 14 dice. 14 dice of machine guns into the kill squad. And that's one, two, three, four, five hits that they get to save. Uh, there's a chance they pull this out. Uh, they're rolling five saves and they do save on shields thanks to cover. And they had dazzling speed anyway, so they would have been fine regardless. Uh, one, two, three, but two damage gets through. So that's gonna be one on this cadet and then one more on Hitomi and Hitomi goes down as well. Woof, it's bloody. It's bloody out here in the world. But wait, there's more. We've got one more machine gun that's gonna go into this squad here. Uh, they did not have their camo up first round because they wanted to take out some dudes in the strong point, and we're gonna see if that was the right call. Okay, we're rolling five dice against that support squad. They do get an infantry uh, save here. Uh, only two hits are going through. Uh, but that would be enough to knock out the squad. They need a faction symbol here to stay up. And they get it. So we're down to one health on the railgun team. And that was a pretty effective six-shooter activation. So Wang Si Wong could send her uh, group forward to try to take out Johnny One-Eye. And that's not a bad move. But then we've got a Black Hawk and a Hot Dog that... Probably are going to have their number after that. So before we get too eager there, uh, let's use up the last of this railgun team. They've got one model left. Uh, so we're going to sustain fire into the six shooter. Now against armor five, we are rolling a single die. 
sorry, armor six. We're rolling a single die. Each one of these hits would do three damage, and we're gonna sustain fire. So we get to reroll this if it misses. Uh, it hits on a faction symbol we missed. So let's try it again one more time. Uh, and we missed again. So unfortunately that railgun team uh, tries to retaliate a little bit here uh, and gets a whole lot of nothing. A subtle advantage that Johnny One-Eye has here is that he started the round with four activations, but because of those small little infantry squads that were still up on the board, uh, Wang Si Wong still had seven. So Johnny got three pass tokens, and now that some initial uh, fighting has ensued, uh, he does not need to necessarily move any further down the beach. So he can just wait for the ninjas to come at him. So Johnny One-Eye, after using his three very valuable pass tokens, has sort of uh, stabilized his rangers, and all of a sudden, Wang Si Wong's got quite an uphill battle for her. Uh, she has to go now, and unfortunately, the Hot Dog and the Black Hawk, neither of them have gone yet. So regardless of which side of that strong point she uh, tries to move around, uh, there's going to be a, uh, an opportunity for one of these vehicles to uh, kind of move forward and mess her up and she really needs this ninja squad in order to try to take that objective That's really in her best interest. So so what she is gonna do is uh, She is gonna stay Right where she is. She still has her improved camo and that means that the hot dog cannot come up and get her uh, And it also means the black hawk cannot move over and shoot her this turn as well so they have to then go after other targets she is going to try to keep her and her infiltration squad healthy for another day, and she is just going to do two nothing actions. All right, well, Johnny's got his two walkers left to go, so we're going to move with the Black Hawk first. Uh, the Black Hawk has a move speed of three, so it's going to move one, two, and change its firing arc, and it is going to go after the Basan here, a very, very nasty opponent. So. Uh, the Black Hawk rolls three dice against uh, Vehicle 4, and each one of these is going to do six damage. The Basan has eight health, uh, and it is in cover because it did not destroy that ammo crate. So, with that in mind, here you go. Uh, only one gets through, and uh, the Basan has a chance to block that thanks to that cover. Oh, and it does! Oh my gosh! All right, well... Uh, so much for that plan. Uh, the Black Hawk is now unloaded because that is a, the Heavy Piot is a loading weapon. So hopefully the Black Hawk is going to have a chance to use that again. Uh, the Hot Dog, I'm just now realizing, is unlike some of the other vehicles that I expected, it actually has a move speed of 3.5, which is very, very fast and unfortunately is very, very bad for Wang Si Wong here. The Hot Dog is going to move one two three with the free diagonal 
and we're just gonna we're, we're just gonna let's let's rotate our firing arc like this so that it's sideways we can throw some machine guns into this ninja here we can throw the napalm this away and um, and we're gonna we're gonna mess up some some homies Okie dokie, well let's start with the napalm thrower that has a range of two and it gets to hit everything in that range. So it's gonna go one and then two to this sort of empty spot here. Uh, it's only gonna hit these ninjas. They are automatically suppressed and they get no saves. Sad day for them. One, two, three hits. Uh, and that is all gonna go onto Wang Si Wong. She's gonna tank it for her group. So uh, she only has one health left. Uh, that unit is now suppressed and we are going to continue on uh, the heavy machine gun only rolls five dice And so we're gonna throw that against the ninja squad that only has one person remaining So this is against that one remaining ninja uh, Two shots there uh, the ninja does get to make its saving throws It is in cover so shields count and shields count so that is unfortunately not enough uh, for that unit to be finished off and then we're gonna throw our remaining seven dice from our regular machine gun Into the ninja squad with Wang Si Wong. She only has one health remaining so she cannot tank any of these shots and that is not as uh, Good as we were hoping for that's two damage uh, They do get infantry saves here. So saving on faction symbols. No uh, No cover so one damage does get through uh, Wang Si Wong is going to lose one ninja, and uh, we possibly paid the price for splitting fire here, but that is a big blow to Wang Si Wong here. Well, after a very grim start, the Rangers are starting to pull it back a little bit, which is kind of exciting. Johnny One-Eye is trying to play conservatively. He knows that he's the defender, so he does not need to stick his neck out for his remaining infantry squad. Uh, he's going to let the vehicles do the heavy lifting here. Uh, the IJN, on the other hand, had a great first round, but a really rough second round. Uh, they're losing a lot of their good anti-vehicle uh, units. They're left with just um, some of the flamethrowers, I think, from the Bassan, and then the railgun team has one lonely remaining ninja. But she held on there at the end. Her infantry did not... Uh, go the way of the dinosaur and so we're going to move into round three not really knowing who's got this game in the back <laughs> Well, Johnny's got some good options here. He could do the exact same thing with the hot dog like he just did at the end of last round, although we saw that that was uh, able to be shrugged off by the ninjas. Uh, he's also got this Blackhawk here that could be blown up by the Bassan or the Railgun team. Well, let's be real, the Anenra could also do that. So uh, if he wants to keep the Blackhawk around, which does pack a pretty big punch, uh, he should activate that one first and retreat with it. Um, the hot dog can do some attacks, the uh, six shooter can do some attacks, and then of course the recon squad can move up into the uh, strong point at some point if it needs to. So there's a lot of offensive options. Uh, well, this is round three out of six, and all that he's got to do is just survive to the end. So uh, what he is going to do is he's going to uh, move the Blackhawk out of line of sight of the railgun team. The Blackhawk's going to stand back here, and then the Blackhawk is going to reload baby which one is that yeah good to go with things looking as shaky as they are for Wang Si Wong uh, she has a couple of options here including using the railgun team uh, to try to do some damage to the six shooter but that's not going to take out that activation so uh, she could also try to go hog wild and just try to rip apart the hot dog I don't think she's going to succeed at that either so we're going to use the Bassan uh, it is one of the two really good targets for the recoil guns over here, but we're going to hope that the Bassan can survive this turn because the recoil guns still have to uh, reload. So the Bassan is going to uh, step up. We're going to go one, two, change the firing arc a little bit here. And we're going to unload uh, all that we can into the hot dog because there's a chance that we can actually blow that one up. So... Uh, the Bassan has a Phosphorus Thrower, uh, which is going to light the ground on fire, and then a Heavy Assault Mortar, which is going to become uh, 
unloaded after this attack. Uh, the hot dog is vehicle four, so we're rolling one die that's going to do three damage, and another die that could possibly do four damage. And if uh, we do both of those, that would be seven damage, and the hot dog only has six health. So we're going to see what we can do. Phosphorus Thrower is going to be the darker die of the two. Uh, we get no fancy rerolls or anything. It's just on faction symbols. Oh my goodness! What? What happened there? That's incredible. So that's three damage and four damage, I believe. And that is enough to blow up the hot dog. And all of a sudden, Wang Si Wong is maybe in a good spot. Let's do this. Let's, let's leave the walker up. I'm just looking sad. Let's leave the tank there. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, Johnny One-Eye only has a couple of options for activations here. Uh, so let's go ahead with the six shooter. Uh, last time the six shooter did salvo, so we have to spend our first action reloading the dual triple if we want a chance of uh, using that this turn. Now the Basan is definitely pretty a pretty big deal, but the Anenra hasn't even gone yet. So uh, we could try to remove that activation, and I think that's the way to go. So uh, Johnny's going to throw the dual triples into the Anenra here. Uh, and if they both hit the Anemra goes down, each of those shots does, I believe, five damage. Yes, that's correct. Uh, the regular machine guns uh, don't have the range, but we've got a heavy machine gun that actually has range eight all the way over to the railgun team, who is not yet activated. So we're going to try to get that uh, activation economy going. Uh, these are the two dice for the dual triple recoilless. And if they both hit, that will be 10 damage to the Vasan, or excuse me, the Anenra, uh, but only one hit. So the Anenra is going to take five damage and go down to two remaining health. Uh, after that, we're going to roll for our uh, heavy machine gun, which has a, a range of eight, uh, but only rolls five dice. However, uh, there's an infantry save here, and if it does not save the unit, let's reroll this one, uh, then that, uh, that entire squad is down. So we got two hits here, uh, and we're going to try to save those. We need two uh, faction symbols from the a railgun team to survive and we don't get it. So the railgun team is gunned down. So sad. But uh, Johnny One-Eye is continuing to uh, hold this beachfront for longer than I expected. Uh, and now Wang Si Wong only has a couple of options, three of them to be specific. And the Anenra is probably a pretty good candidate to move up on this strong point should Johnny want to move in there. So uh, the Anenra is maybe not the correct activation to go with. Uh, so we're going to kind of force Johnny's hand a little bit. Uh, and we're going to move uh, this one uh, ninja uh, unit. Now they do get to roll two dice to try to remove suppression. And uh, they fail again, so they are only left with one action. And that action is going to be to move up to this point. So uh, they have a move speed of two. They get to keep their camo because they haven't taken anything other than a move action. Johnny One-Eye is then going to go, and he still has one pass this round. So you know what? Let's go ahead and use it. Uh, Johnny One-Eye is going to use his one individual pass. And that brings us back over to Wang Si Wong. Uh, it is probably in her best interest to uh, keep the dream alive with this ninja squad here. And um, so they are going to move up, keep their improved camo so they can only move this turn. Uh, and they are going to make their way over here. Uh, you know what? Let's roll for that suppression first. So they're rolling two dice for suppression here. Uh, they do bump it down to under fire, it looks like. Uh, so we're going to swap that out here. And that means that they do get their second action. I'm not sure if they want to use it. That the camo is really, really good. Um, but there's maybe some shenanigans from like a Blackhawk or something like that. So they could march and then re-put up the camo next turn. That would be another option. Um, and they could hide maybe behind these trees over here. Um, no, no, camo's pretty good. I think they're just going to hang out there. Uh, the Basan is kind of blocking some line of sight as well. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll call that good. Well, Johnny's going to activate his recon squad here, and there's a couple of considerations. One is 
Now, uh, Wang Si Wong is within her march speed. One, two, three, four, five of the objective. And because she's a ninja, you can't contest it. She just gets the objective. So uh, if she marched onto there, he'd have until the end of that round to clear that entire unit or else lose. So evacuating this spot's a little bit risky. On top of that, if he moves up into here to maybe attack this unit or around the corner here, now he's within line of sight of the Anenra, who can then move up to where this box is, uh, take some shots downtown, and, uh, you know, he's he's currently winning, and there's no reason to overextend himself, so he is just going to spend his turn taking two nothing actions as well, and uh, I, guess we're, I guess we're good. So Wang Si Wong only has one unit remaining, and it is the Anenra, and the Anenra has possibly an opportunity here to... Um, uh, well, can the Anenra even attack? Uh, it can roll one die for one damage against the six shooter, which is not particularly impressive, but you know what? Uh, she only wants to really move up to here with the Anenra uh, so that the Anenra can threaten the strong point. So you know what? Why not? Let's move, or sorry, let's shoot and then move. Uh, we're going to roll one die against the six shooter here. And uh, this does one damage on a hit. And it does. So the six shooter, Nani Nani Nunu, uh, takes a damage. Actually, the six shooter does get a cover save because half of that vehicle is in the trees here. Let's see if that matters. Uh, it does not. It would need a faction symbol. So the six shooter is going to take one point of damage. Who knows if that might be relevant? It's down to six health now. And then the Anenra is going to move as its second action onto that ammo crate. Uh, and that is going to bring us to the end of round three. That round three was definitely uh, very tactical. There was a lot of interesting decisions being made. Uh, taking out the hot dog really early on uh, definitely is keeping the IJN in the game a little bit. And then there's been a little bit of a cat and mouse since then. But uh, the ninjas are going to try to wrap their way around the strong point potentially. And Johnny One-Eye and his recon squad are the only ones holding them back. So uh, let's see what happens in round four. <laughs> Man, Johnny is rolling hot on initiative here. Let's see what happens. Uh, we're going to go with the Blackhawk first because nothing alpha strikes like a Blackhawk, right? Blackhawk is going to move and then fire on the Bassan. It has a range of four uh, with its heavy Piat and it rolls three dice against uh, vehicle four. It's going to do six damage on a hit. Uh, so two of these are going to need to hit in order for that Bassan to go down. Let's see what happens. Oh, a big whiff from the Blackhawk, and it is gonna need to uh, use up its ammo for the heavy Piat. So that's a pretty mediocre start uh, for Johnny. Let's see how uh, Wang Si Wong retaliates. So after giving it some thought, I think Wang Si Wong uh, is looking at this Bassan. It's clearly enemy number one, but it still has all eight of its health. And uh, pretty much no matter where the Bassan moves, this six shooter is gonna is gonna have its number. So it is going to uh, turn around here and um, back up to. We'll go to this point, I think here. I don't think any of the shots are necessarily going to kill uh, these guys here. But if you reload and then somehow the Bassan goes the way of the dinosaur, it's kind of leaving damage on the table. So we're gonna uh, move as the first action and second action fire. We're going to throw the, the uh, Bassan's two machine guns uh, into the Blackhawk. Uh, the, uh, the heavy assault mortar uh, still needs to reload, so we don't have an option of using that, but we do have the phosphorus thrower, which can go into the, um, uh, the six-shooter, and good news with that is that it uh, is a fire weapon. So it's going to set this ground on, on fire here. Uh, could do some extra damage, and uh, I think it ignores saves as well. So that seems pretty good. Let's start with the Phosphorus Thrower. Uh, we're rolling just a single die, but it's going to do three damage on a hit. And uh, let's see what we get here. Uh, it's a miss. Uh, so nothing nothing doing, but we are uh, but we are on fire. So we've, we've got that going for us, and that could possibly do some damage here 
as well as in its own little way. Uh, and then we're going to go with five dice from two different machine guns throwing into the Black Hawk. So rolling those up. Uh, we got three dice. Uh, these are machine guns and the Black Hawk is in cover. So the Black Hawk does get to make its three saving throws, saving on faction symbols. But all of them go through. So the Black Hawk is actually going to take three damage. Uh, it has four health. And so the Black Hawk barely scrapes by and lives to see another day. Well, we're not really interested in seeing anything else happen, so let's go ahead and use that uh, so that six shooter here, uh, as its weapons are all mostly uh, turrets. Uh, it is going to shoot uh, its uh, dual triple recoilless into the Bassan, but first the ground's on fire, and the rules just say that for phosphorus you uh, roll for damage every turn. So I'm going to assume that's at the start of an activation. Could be at the start of a turn, could be at the end of a turn. I have no idea, uh, so I'm just going to roll for it now. And when it says roll for it. I don't know either, so I'm going to use it as a uh, as an attack roll, sort of a uh, blast one damage attack, and we're going to see if that's accurate or enough. Uh, looks like one damage is going in uh, to the six shooter, bringing it down to five health, uh, and then the six shooter is going to sustain fire onto the uh, Bassan, and you know what? Uh, we came here to play, right? So let's salvo as well. Uh, Bassan is a vehicle four, so each of these is going to do five damage. I'm salvoing, so I'm rolling double dice. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh, but we're spending our entire time attacking here, the entire turn. So let's uh, just go ahead and sustain that fire. Um, woof. TGI sustain, am I right? Oh my gosh, still a whole lot of nothing. That's five damage to the Bassan which uh, is better than a sharp poke in the eye, but was really hoping to kind of finish off that unit. Um, there's nothing else that is within range right now. One reason why I'm keeping uh, this guy here is because it's got a couple of turreted machine guns to shoot into the objective, uh, depending on what happens here in future turns. So we're kind of playing it safe. Uh, that is the six shooter. <laughs> So ends round four with the Anenra destroying and finishing off the Black Hawk. We're getting down to the wire here. Uh, 
Wang Si Wong is uh, down to her last infantry unit, but she does still have two walkers, and she could actually use those to help challenge the objective. Uh, but the six shooter is still looming off in the distance here, and Johnny One Eye still has his full recon squad, and he's looking mighty healthy. So uh, this initiative roll is going to matter a whole lot to see which infantry unit gets the jump on the other one, uh, and that could really define the rest of the game. So let's go ahead and start round five. <laughs> All right, to start off round five, Johnny One-Eye is still rolling lights out when it comes to initiative, so he's going to get the jump, and he could use the six-shooter to try to finish off the Bassan, and that's not terrible, but really the game's going to come down to these infantry units, I think, and uh, Johnny has a unique opportunity here. So he's going to move and fire with his recon squad, and they are going to move up into the forest here, and they are going to pour all of their uh, bullets into uh, the Shadow of Death squad uh but they also have two under barrel launchers they each do two damage i believe so they're going to launch those over to the anenra and uh, maybe they can finish it off we will see the anenra only has two health left so does a, so does the basan uh but uh we're gonna we're gonna see what can happen here okay so 15 dice for all of the uh ranger recon daca as it were uh we're gonna roll johnny separately uh, so these are hitting on faction symbols, and I see one, two, three, four, five hits. Uh, that, so that's five hits, and let's go ahead and roll for Johnny as well. Johnny's rolling seven dice, and he has killing spree, so any of these that hit are uh, going to explode into more dice. So I see three hits so far, uh, and then that means that we get to roll three more dice. So let's roll these three here. Uh, that's another hit, so we're up to four, uh, and another die. Nothing. All right, so we got four hits from Johnny plus five hits from the recon squad. These ladies are not in cover at all. They are uh, looking pretty exposed. They're going to have to roll pretty lights out here. This was maybe a bad position, and they only save once. And so with that, Johnny One-Eye destroys Wang Si Wong's very careful assault, and we are down to the final numbers of this game. But wait, there's more. We've got under barrel launchers. Each of these would do two damage to the Anenra, and the Anenra is not in cover, so it does not get a saving throw, but neither of them hit. Uh, and those are uh, once per game limited ammo uh, abilities, so the Anenra can still exact some kind of vengeance. But first, the Bassan is going to go. First, let's see if we can shake off that under fire token. Uh, it does not, but that's okay. It still gets both of its actions. Its first action is going to actually be to reload, I think. And then the its second action is going to be to uh, throw some dice into the six-shooter to try to finish it off. Uh, it is going to use first its, um, first its uh, Phosphorus Thrower, which is going to roll a single die and do three damage. I guess they both do the same damage against Armor 6. So the Heavy Assault Mortar we're also going to throw in there. And this is going to do three damage. Uh, let's take a look. It's in a book. It's reading rainbow. Nothing. No, the Bassan. You, you, you poor, you poor lad. Uh, there is nothing else that it can really attack this turn. So that is the Bassan's activation, and it is a sad one indeed. Well, that means we're over to the six shooter. First, uh, we are going to make an attack roll for the flame. Again, the six shooter is going to take a single point of damage if I roll a faction symbol, which I did not. Uh, so the six shooter does not have that fire to worry about anymore. And it is just going to, uh, it's going to reload its dual triples. And uh, then we're just going to um, toss some dice towards the uh, Bassan there. And we're going to kind of stay in the way. Uh, so let's roll uh, these two dice here. Uh, let's see, the we're doing five damage on a hit. Uh, rolling two dice against the Bassan. Oh, a whole lot of nothing, but um, it's still in a commanding spot, and really it is the Rangers game to lose at this point. So let's go over to the Anenra here, uh, who is going to move. 
Uh, and they are going to move over uh, to the forest here to make sure that they can get some perspective on Johnny One-Eye. And I think the plan here for uh, the Shadow of Death is that we're going to try to get these two walkers back over there to the objective. And there is one unit in the way. So let's go ahead and unload with the Anenra. That's going to be the way forward, I think. Uh, the Anenra um, rolls... Um, a bunch of dice against infantry two, uh, specifically nine plus six is 15 plus 11 is 26 dice. Hachi machi. Okay. Here is the first 13 dice from the Anemra heading into the Johnny one eye. All right. Here's the second 13 and I see one, two, three, four more hits. So that means that Johnny one eye is going to have to make nine saves here. Uh, that might not be the end of the world. They are in cover, it looks like. So we're saving on shields as well as faction symbols, which means that you can count the crosshairs. One, two, three, four damage goes through. Johnny up to this point has been um, undamaged. So he's just gonna soak all four of those hits and the entire Ranger Recon Squad remains on the table, although they are under fire. That round five initiative was definitely a big deal, and uh, Johnny One Eye rolling up and smoking Wang Si Wong was uh, pretty rough for the Japanese. So they're going to have to make a blitz for the objective here, uh, probably use the Basan to try to take it over, and uh, hope that everyone survives. Uh, and they could technically still squeak this one out, but uh, the Rangers uh, definitely have it in their pocket, I think. All right, that was a critical initiative, and yet Johnny One Eye is still batting a thousand on that. So we're gonna go first with uh, the uh, six shooter, and we're gonna end on a on a whisper instead of a yell. So the six shooter is going to uh, actually well, no, that's fine. We're gonna uh, move the six shooter back. Oh no, my pilot, my pilot, you gotta get back in there for your victory. Uh, six Shooter is going to move back here uh, and uh, take a nothing action for its uh, second action. Uh, now the Basan doesn't have a route that it can use to get over there uh, unless it's, even if it's shot, destroyed the uh, Six Shooter and then moved uh, one, two, which I'm not even sure if it can move around that corner, but regardless, it wouldn't be on the objective. Uh, the Anenra. Uh, could shoot Johnny One-Eye, even if it wiped out that unit, it could move one, two, and stand in the same spot that Johnny One-Eye is, or it can march one, two, three, four. Neither walker can get to the objective this turn, which was maybe a little bit short-sighted on the side of Wang Si Wong and the Japanese, uh, but that is going to close out our game, uh, and uh, that's going to be a Johnny One-Eye victory. Well done, Rangers. Well, that was certainly a very short round six, but uh, it definitely goes to show that you need to keep your mind on the objective the whole time. Wang Si Wong knew that she had a, a very strong ability to try to challenge that objective if she could just get some of her ninjas there. Uh, but uh, I think uh, Johnny One-Eye was really smart. Johnny stayed back. He guarded the objective. He knew that the Japanese had to come to him, and he used that to his advantage uh, the mid game was definitely very exciting. Lots of uh, tactical plays and um, I think some smart decisions from both sides trying to eliminate activations and just keep some manpower on the table. Uh, but by the end of the game, uh, some smart defensive positioning from the Rangers prevented uh, Wang Si Wong from uh, getting to the objective. They were able to gun her down and then, of course, block off the walkers. So that's going to do it. That is a Ranger victory. It is the first part of three for our Baja California campaign. Uh, I'm hoping to get up another game here relatively soon, so definitely uh, stay tuned. Check back in with the channel. Uh, if you enjoy this, please give me a like and comment. You know the drill. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, my name is Graham, and we'll see you next time uh, on Graham Cracker Gaming.